Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Bitch Bible Podcast. I've redone this 15 times, which I never do. Um, I'm in a weird mood. I'm not going to lie. I'm feeling spicy yet somber. And what heals the soul more than talking shit with my girlies? Nothing. We're going to, you know, we're going to get into it as the professionals say. But I'm in a bit of a weird mood. Um, obviously, I I don't want to like perpetuate any any thing about anything okay and I barely want to talk about it because I think there's something deeply toxic and disgusting with people's necessity and audacity if you will to align themselves with someone who's passed I'm super sensitive to this because as someone who's gone through grief so close to me I never understood the psychology behind people wanting that by proxy pity or wanting all of a sudden, you know, best, we're best friends. We knew each other and yet they hit you with the montage and a eulogy. And it just feels so, I don't know. I don't want to say contrived because everyone heals differently, but I, I'm just annoyed and really disgusted by the media and their portrayal of, uh, Liam Payne's passing um I think it's just disgusting I think that I think we are so desensitized to everything especially with social media the fact that a child could just like grab their parents phone and you know see I don't I don't even really want to get into details but TMZ it is my personal agenda to a bring back the barbecue black beans at El Pollo Loco because that's a national travesty but also I would like to personally dismantle TMZ because it is the most disgusting toxic excuse for journalism and media that I've personally witnessed I I mean the the details and it's not like fodder for clicks this is somebody's son this is somebody's father this is a human being and I'm so like deeply revolted and disappointed with just the coverage on everything and I'm not gonna do the thing where I like you know I knew him but Liam was a lovely human being and um it's just it's disgusting that they are sullying a legacy with all of these details and salacious bits. Um, and the fact that people who knew him and are were close to him are finding things out through the internet is first is so disgusting. So I'm in a bit of a weird mood. Um, it's yeah, it's just really, really fucking sad. And he was a great dude. And I'm happy that I got to spend time with him and see him when he was in a great headspace. See, even that feels gross. Now I want to redo this again because I don't want to do the thing where I'm like, I knew him feel bad for me. I just want to say he was absolutely lovely. I mean, I have great, fond, happy memories with him. And so does Andrew. And it's just, we're just... We're fucking sad, okay? It sucks. Um, it sucks a lot. Anyways, <laughs> how do I, like, now what am I supposed to talk about? Oh, I know what I'm going to talk about. We're moving right the fuck along. Um, okay, so this morning, okay, let's, let's, let's lighten the mood, okay? It is spooky season, and the Schimmel hyphen Haas house has had a real fucking doozy this morning. Okay, let's cue up some, like, you know, free licensed spooky music. Did I take my son to a pumpkin patch last week? Yes, I did. I want to tell you something. Okay, pumpkin patches are a Ponzi scheme. I went to the fucking pumpkin patch, okay? It's fall, y'all. Cue the infinity sweater. And... You know, I'm trying to do the thing. I want a picture of my son in a fucking wheelbarrow, okay? So we go, we pick out a pumpkin. I'm like, Clyde, what pumpkin do you want? He's fucking 14 months. He's eating sawdust off the floor. He probably has hand, foot, mouth disease, okay? For me trying to have this cute, you know, mom experience. Mama bear over here. Grab your accrue Stanley cups, a wide brim hat, and saunter over to the pumpkin patch with your little one okay um 
So I find this pumpkin. Okay, we put it in the wheelbarrow. I go up to the front. I grab some candy corn and I say, Katie, with two E's, how much is this cute pumpkin? It was $65 for a medium-sized, basic-ass, orange goddamn pumpkin. $65 fucking dollars for a fucking squash. And I'm looking around and all of these dumb bitches, okay, all with their crossbody bags and their golden gooses loading up those wheelbarrows. I was like, are you headed to Versailles? You have a thousand dollars worth of pumpkins. And then I wanted to like nudge, nudge, be like, yo, bitch, you know, you can go to Trader Joe's one block over and these pumpkins are six ninety nine, the same exact fucking pumpkin. Why are we spending sixty five dollars on pumpkins? Nobody gets a badge of honor. OK, no one gets a mama bear crown for taking your fucking overbite son to the pumpkin patch and letting him pick out a $65 pumpkin or worse, seven of them, seven of them. You know what pumpkins bring? Squirrel infestations. I'm sorry. Did I buy the pumpkin? Of course I did. Will I be back next year? Probably. Did I get more than one? Yes, I went back the next day because it was a little, it was feeling a little hollow and I needed one more pick of baby Clyde on a, on a haystack. But this is, it's corrupt. The pumpkin patch is corrupt. The Christmas tree lot. You know what? Here's the thing about Christmas tree lots, okay? Did I get a $10 off coupon for a Douglas fir Christmas tree come November 1st? You betcha, Iris. At least Christmas trees are a specialty item. You know, you can't go to your local Trader Joe's and load up on a, on a Douglas fir. So there is an allure there's a smell, there's a catch, there's a bite, okay? The pumpkin patch, it's a glorified squash for 65 fucking dollars. Do I have a cornucopia cascading waterfall of tricolored pumpkins going down my entryway? <sighs> I do. Do I have unlacquered brass lanterns with little um, electronic uh, flameless hurricane candles? Yes, I do. I am that bitch. Now, cue the spooky music. Um, spooky. I am one click away from heading into a fucking Marshalls and getting some spider web dangling earrings. This morning, okay, Andrew's been in Nashville the whole week. He came home last night. This morning, I was like, bitch, you're up. I passed that fucking proverbial baton. And I said, this child hath broken me this week. I am on reserve fuel. I'm having dark, ragey thoughts. Yesterday, started having a little bit of ragey thoughts towards Clyde. Normally, I can muscle through him and his cuteness factor takes me out of the dark thoughts. But yesterday, call CPS, clip it. I started kind of dreaming of throwing him into a wall. Would never. But when he was screaming and using my fresh freshly brawned uh, tendrils as a like a ropes course. When he started grabbing two chunks of my hair and leveraging his fat body like to pull to stand and was screaming endlessly and just, you know, now he's found his penis, he's found his asshole, uh, the feces and the hair and the whole fucking thing. I was like, dude, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done with you. And then he like smiles and like kisses me. And I'm like, okay, we're back. What do you want for lunch? I'll take you anywhere and buy you anything. And like, we're together forever. Let's get married. But there are moments where I'm like, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna literally pad a wall, pad a room and lock you in there for an hour while I go cry myself to sleep. But we're back. The serotonin is spiking, honey. So this morning I was like, get him Take him away. I don't want to see him for an hour. So Andrew and him are in his front little playroom. It's, I mean, he's been waking up so early. It's devastating. He's been waking up at like 6 a.m., but it's dark out. So it's it just puts you in a weird headspace. So I saunter out to the playroom at about, I'd say, 7.03 a.m. And I sit down and we're playing and I'm a little foamy and I'm a little, you know, ugh. I'm just, I'm not working with a full deck, okay? I don't have all my faculties. And I look out the window and I see what I think is my sister standing at the end of my driveway looking at my house. 
and I kind of I kind of sit up and I'm wearing my spectacles, my Dahmer spectacles, and I kind of start blinking it out, blinking the sleepies away. And I say, is that Ashley? And Andrew kind of sits up and he's a little foamy and blinking it out. And there is a woman in a short baby blue robe, okay, brunette, long hair, standing at the base of my driveway looking at my house. So then I think, huh, maybe it's a neighbor, a neighbor that I don't know. And I hate to, you know, ruin the magic, but I kind of know all my fucking neighbors. And it's not one of my neighbors. And I'm looking for a leash. I'm looking for a pup. I'm looking for a squirrel. I'm looking for a cat. I'm looking for a horse. I'm not seeing a leash. I'm seeing a woman windstruck. The Santa Ana winds are blowing. Okay, there was a fire behind my house yesterday. And I thought, "Mm, no wonder my hair looks so good. And also, if the backyard burns down, would insurance cover a rebuild? Because in that case, I'm going to pour lighter fluid all over my mosaic dolphins, okay? And hightail it the fuck out of here. When there was a fire in the backside of my house, did I vacate the premises and go get oysters and a martini with Clyde? You betcha, Iris. I was like, burn, baby, burn. Disco inferno. Let's. I'm like, grab the Bottegas, load up the shoes, and let's GTFO. Just me, just imagine me just fucking helicoptering lighter fluid all over my backyard. I'm like, mm, maybe we could do that outdoor pagoda. And I do have three fire features in my plans, in my blueprints. So burn, baby, burn. You gotta do it. Um. Anyways, back to the poltergeist situation. I look at the bottom of my driveway and there's a woman, 7 a.m., hair blowing in the wind, Very call Colleen Hoover, Red Rover, Red Rover, send Colleen Hoover right over, standing at the edge of of my property, staring up at my home, no dog in tow, okay? And not to brag, but I have a fairly large property, so it wouldn't, it doesn't make sense. It does. It just geographically doesn't make sense. So I say, Andrew, what the fuck is that? We kind of look forward, we make eye contact, and then she disappears in the brush, okay? I'm like, Andrew, put on your little... <laughs> Put on your Adidas slides and socks and shuffle those pear-shaped thighs down the driveway and see if mommy has a stalker. Because humble brag, in 2021, I did have a looming death threat. And I've tried to like zoom in, whatever. I don't know who this bitch was. So Andrew goes down the driveway, disappeared. We're looking at cars on the streets. We don't know where the fuck, she could be squatting in the brush. But there is a woman in a pale, she's churning butter. There is a brunette woman, okay, in a short, micro, skanky ass, I would say a velour or terry cloth baby blue robe that was looming in front of my house this morning, okay? And all I want to say is, don't try me, bitch. Do not try me. I am small, but I am scrappy, and I will do weird, weird shit, My biggest fear in life is like waking up in the middle of the night and having someone stand over me. Would it be amazing for downloads? Yes. Would it be toxic for my serotonin at this point in time? Yes. If you're going to come break into my house or peeping Tom and you're going to wear a robe, at least wear bitch Bible merch robes. You know what I mean? That's that's just top tier stocking. I don't know if she was just a neighbor admiring my cascading pumpkins cape. That's what I will tell myself so I can sleep tonight. And spooky music. Thank you. Let's discuss something we all care about. What's on your feet? And no, I'm not talking those super cute, but actually torture chamber shoes. I'm talking about g shoes, the shoes your feet have literally been begging for. By the end of the day, we're all feeling a little broken down like a reunion special, which is why g provides two free orthotics with every shoe and a built-in lateral stabilizer that realigns your body. Sick of feeling like your feet are taking more hits than a watch what happens live guess? g patented VersoShock technology absorbs all that shock and stress so you don't have to. 
you. Whether you're power walking to a brunch or making a dramatic exit, these shoes have your back and your feet. Who knew comfort could be this chic and this shady? So if you're still walking around in shoes that scream, I'm suffering, honey, it's time for an upgrade. Use code BIBLE for $20 off orders of $100 or more at gdefy.com. That's BIBLE for $20 off orders of $100 or more at gdefy.com. One thing about me, honey, I love a good pair of denim. Okay, I am denim, but sometimes my constantly fluctuating body makes it very hard to fit into my favorite pair. Luckily, I just got a pair of Good Americans Always Fits jeans. And I have to say, being completely honest, I was a bit of a cynic and I am a firm believer and endorser of Good American jeans moving forward. Whether you've got a big lunch, a few cocktails, or you know, maybe it's that time of the month, these jeans fit like a dream. They stretch perfectly with your body. They give you room to move and breathe without ever losing their shape. It is truly like they were made for me. Co-founded by Khloe Kardashian and Emma Greed, Good American has a mission to redefine fashion through inclusivity and comfort, creating denim that feels as good as it looks, catering to all body shapes and sizes. Good American's Always Fits Denim uses a one-size-fits-four design that adapts to your body's changes and fluctuations, guaranteeing the perfect fit every time. So when your body changes, your jeans won't need to. They're limitless four-way stretch and recovering denim moves with you stretching up and down four sizes holding its shape and flattering yours they also feature a gap proof waistband tummy smoothing technology 100 stretch and reinforced belt loops good american offers a wide variety of styles that cater to every preference and occasion their sizing is so inclusive everything from size double zero to a plus size 32 shop now at goodamerican.com use promo code bitch bible for 50 dollars off your first pair Don't forget to select podcasts at checkout and choose our show to let them know we sent you. Once again, go to goodamerican.com. Use the promo code BITCHBIBLE. You're going to get $50 off. Oh, we're going to need to queue up that spooky music again. Guys, things aren't going good in the Schimmel hyphen Haas house. And while I complain for shtick and sport most weeks, shit hath Hit thy fan. And it is just helicoptering all over the place. Speaking of helicopters, maybe you hear them in the background. That's because allegedly my house might burn down. But she believes she could. And she did. The hair, I mean, the blow dry longevity is unbelievable. But we might be in a bit of a situation. Just kidding. We're fine. Um, Here's what's not great. The only thing keeping me afloat these days is my $11 Amazon crystal carafe that I'm drinking out of as we speak. Let me just take a little, little sipple here. Remember yesterday when I told you that there was a colonial woman, (laughs) a brunette woman at 7.03 a.m. standing in the front of my house, staring at my house, no pet in sight in a short uh, micro fleece, baby blue, femur bearing robe okay that was strike one strike two I received a text message okay from a Manhattan New York phone number this morning at 7 14 a.m I would like to read it to you because this is not how I'd like to start my days <clears throat> did I block her or him <clears throat> did you sleep well last night my friend Is there anything more horrifying than a text message on the precipice or on the aftershock of a potential peeping Tiana, okay, a peeping Priscilla, to then receive a text message that says, did you sleep well last night, my friend? Uh, No, Rebecca, I did not sleep well last night because I was afraid that a woman in a plush baby blue femur skimming robe was going to be standing at the ed- the edge of my newly renovated bed. My <laughs> pink mohair floating platform bed. So no, I didn't sleep well last night. Thank you so much for asking. I was up every hour on the hour having cold sweats. Here's the problem with Unisom that nobody tells you about. I've been taking Unisom 
every single day for the past two years. And I do need to wean myself off because I would like to be able to slumber without any type of crutch, but I'm not there yet. And the problem is that when the wheels start working over in my cerebral cortex and I am unable to fall asleep, the delayed reaction of the unisom puts me in a dream within a dream within a dream. So I wake up while streaming three times Inception style, which is crazy because I actually in one of my dreams, I was at my childhood home and Leonardo DiCaprio was there and I was married, but I was trying to act like I was single. But then he was into my cousin, Laura. I got to send her this and which makes sense because she's so gorgeous. But I was like still trying to push vibe because what I lack in facial symmetry and midsection currently, I really pop off the pages with my vibe. And I would just like to say that because these Pluto TV commercials have really opened the floodgates. I am getting a lot of really visceral DMs from strangers telling me that I'm ugly, although someone did call me a butterface two days ago and it has been just the greatest gift because I mean if she, if you're insinuating that I'm snatched in the bod then I will take that and run it does not hurt me it does not hurt me my vibe let me tell you something okay we're not gonna put this as a digital asset because if I I can't physically take it I don't have the bandwidth to have people dulling my sparkle right now but because I have just like a, a the tiniest glimmer left for the rest the remainder of the week and we're going to get into why in a second but you can call me ugly you can call me puffy you can call me stupid you can call me a talentless loser but you cannot tell me that my vibe isn't fucking rock solid sick okay I am I have the best vibe ever even when I'm in the worst mood okay my vibe is still fucking fun it's still a 10 and nobody will take that away from me I am a star and I'm a fucking level 10 vibe so fuck off okay let's listen to one of these let let me just read one of the dms I got yesterday before we go back to my stalker because this is important this is pertinent information there's just so much there's just so much to discuss hold on I have seen the commercials for your podcast on Pluto TV and I am just here to comment from the bottom of my heart that you truly do seem like the worst you also aren't cute enough to be so sassy if only there was a gym for the face bad luck moving forward I said I am fucking great and my life reflects it. Thank you, sweetheart. She says, declaring affirmations on Instagram doesn't change your reality, butterface. Irrelevance isn't for everyone, but you deserve it. I write back, I'm obsessed with you. You know what I really want to write back, but I don't want to immortalize it on social media because I just feel like it would be in poor taste. The commercials for my podcast are running on a program called Pluto TV. No free plugs, but there you go. It is a free streaming service. And all I want to write back to all of these fucks is get cable, bitch, because I feel like it's low key shady and you can kind of read between the lines of what I'm trying to say. It's like cunty and sprightly and and that was my first guttural reaction. Get cable, you dumb bitch. Humble brag, microflex on you. I have every streaming service known to mankind, and I still have fucking cable, okay? I've got a Roku stick. I've got a Hulu. I've got a Netflix account, and it's not linked to my dad's anymore. So riddle me this, okay? Get cable, bitch, and fuck off. Where's your commercial? Nowhere to be seen ever because you want to talk about irrelevance? You're irrelevant. Thanks for the engagement. Okay. And her, actually, her um, Instagram name is Grandma <laughs> Grammar. <laughs> so you're welcome, honey. Love you like a sister. Oh my God. Maybe she's the one standing at the edge of my fucking driveway. Maybe she's the one texting me from New York. <gasps> Don't do it. So, okay. First, First, I've got the woman in the robe. Second, I get a rogue text message 7 a.m. Monday morning saying, did you sleep well last night, my friend? Thirdly, I get a call from Clyde's new school. 
saying that he needs to be walking independently for him to start the program. He is scheduled to start in 24 hours. The fucker is aerodynamic and gravitationally is having a bit of trouble walking he just turned 15 months today i understand it's i don't want any type of feedback we are not milestone pushers in this house if he doesn't want to walk till he's six good for him i don't care i don't push him i practice what i preach reverse universal universal reverse psychology i truly feel like he could do anything if he felt like it because he is my son and he just doesn't right now like why the fuck does this bro want to walk when he can just be carried or you know power crawl wherever the fuck he needs to go he does have a bit of a clicky knee so i'm taking him to the chiropractor and physical therapist tomorrow because the jolly jumper did a number on his kneecaps okay anyways so i have paid tuition in advance. He's gone for a class visit. I have mingled with the teachers. I've been putting out all the feelers. I've been doing all the fucking things, okay? I put on a sensible legging last week and, you know, a, a sensible slide and went to go for a, you know, teacher mommy intro hour and a half. I was razzle dazzling these fucks, okay? Cut to 24 hours saying, we are unable, we're going to have to push his enrollment. Funny thing is that I have cut all outside child care because my nanny needed something more part time. He was enrolled in this school. So we love her so much, but she needed a full time gig. So she moved on to another family last week, which means for the foreseeable future, I am sans child care. Okay. And Andrew, I literally, I screamed, screamed from the bedroom when I got the call. I go, meanwhile, do I have someone here right now? Yes, of course. When I (laughs) say, two people actually, but knowing that I don't have like a locked down routine with him is freaking me the fuck out. And this isn't lovely. Okay. And maybe I should keep this to myself because it is a bit tone deaf. I think that mothers being a stay at home mom, I would like to go on record and say is they are modern modern day superheroes. I could not do it. It's not nice to say. I, I, I don't. I think I would. I would be in a slippery place. OK, it's just it. I I I really I don't have the patience. I just don't. I see I see people like my sister-in-law, my cousin who are just, you know, bleeding out for the family. And I look at them and I want to pull them into a dark corner and be like, blink twice if you want to go to Mexico for a little bit. Like if you want to flee and just post up in Tijuana with my Charlie XCX wig and just go off the grid for three days and then return and pretend like it never fucking happened, I will drive you. I will take you. I will take you there. What are Clyde and I being for Halloween? Then we're going to we're going to get back to things. Um. Is anybody going to appreciate or understand if Clyde and I are Troy Savon and Charlie XCX? I was going to wait and do an Instagram reveal, but it's just, I, I'm just not there right now. I don't have the, I don't have the emotional capacity to just keep that close to the vest. Is Clyde going to be wearing a mesh tank top, a cargo pant, and a microphone and do I have a long black wig and am I going to wear a micro mini pleated skirt and a brat tank top now that I've been called a butterface I'm feeling very emboldened to showcase my bod um yes that is what we were being for Halloween so look out for it I also bought him like a wagon so that I could pull him around for the trick-or-treating I have a smoke machine. I don't know if like the inhalation will be bad for him but I just thought like if we bring a you know, a little portable speaker and just play the track list from the sweat tour. And I just power walk through the streets. You want to guess the color of my underwear. Can you imagine me rolling through the streets of suburbia, just like with sunglasses on a fog machine, my son dressed as Troy Savon in a fucking wagon. And I only hand out like lime green Jolly Ranchers. You want to guess the color of my underwear. I mean, and then I'm just like, oh, God, 
just popping off the pages of life. You don't deserve me. Um, so we've got a stalker and we've got no child care. And it is spooky season, okay? Because I just don't know what these next couple weeks are going to look like for me and my new bronze hair. It's all foreshadowing. It's all fucking foreshadowing. What else was I going to talk about? I needed to land some type of a plane. Cliffhanger, we'll get to it next week. Hey there, overwhelmed foodies, and I'm talking to you, Schimmel. Are you drowning in a sea of meal kit options? You betcha. Feeling like you're in a bad dating game where every contestant looks the same? Fear not, because amidst the chaos, there's one shining star worth your culinary affection. Home Chef is not just another fish in the meal kit sea. Wow, they are the gourmet catch you've been dreaming of. Say goodbye to swiping left on lackluster meals and swipe right for the one brand that will make your taste buds so woon. Home Chef provides fresh ingredients and chef-designed recipes, conveniently delivered to your doorstep to simplify your cooking experience. Whether you prefer classic meal kits with pre-portioned ingredients and easy instructions, speed Speedy recipes ready in less than 30 minutes, oven-ready kits with pre-chopped ingredients, or quick microwave meals that assemble in minutes. Home Chef has over 30 options a week, okay? They've got your entire family covered. They serve a variety of dietary needs, so you don't have to worry about what to make ahead of time. It's so convenient. It's also insanely economical. Home Chef customers save an average of $86 per month on groceries. I love Home Chef. Listen, I used to consider myself a bit of a a bit of a whiz in the kitchen and I just don't have that kind of time or the bandwidth to make decisions at the end of the day. So I need something simple that I can whip together that Andrew can whip up when I need to recline and have my martinis. For a limited time, Home Chef is offering my listeners 18 free meals plus free dessert for life. And of course, free shipping on your first box. Go to homechef.com slash Bible. That is homechef.com slash Bible for 18 free meals and free dessert for life. You heard that right. That's insane. Homechef.com slash Bible must be an active subscriber to receive free dessert. Ever walk into a store and have no idea what wine to get? I've stopped wasting time at the grocery store staring at a giant wall of wine and not knowing what to pick. That's why I love our next sponsor, Naked Wines. This podcast is sponsored by Naked Wines. Naked Wines is a subscription service that directly connects you to the world's finest independent winemakers so you can get award-winning wine delivered straight to your door. With my code BIBLE, you can get six bottles for just $39.99. For my last shipment, I got their sparkling Sonoma Rosé, and I absolutely loved it. Naked Wines believes that great wine is an experience and they're all about helping you connect with your friends, family, and community over a shared bottle of vino. Turn off the noise of the outside and uncork a bottle to celebrate the little joys in life, okay? Naked Wines has been around for over 15 years and funds over 90 independent winemakers around the world. And don't forget, you can pause or cancel at any time. So just because you've got a trip coming up doesn't mean you can't enjoy Naked Wines before or after that much needed vacation. Now is the time to join the Naked Wines community. Head to nakedwines.com com forward slash Bible and put in my code Bible for both the code and password for six bottles of wine for just $39.99 with shipping included. That is nakedwines.com forward slash Bible and code Bible for six bottles of wine for just $39.99. I know how we can lighten the mood. Let's talk about some things that I hate. This is something I jotted down two nights ago at about 12, 11 a.m. when Clyde was screaming because his molars were erupting from his gums. Okay, top of my list any type of going home plot line in reality television or just scripted tv also i hate the like going back to our roots plot lines you know what i mean i don't care about your roots and i don't care about i care about my roots but um i don't care about your roots or humble beginnings i was watching real housewives of beverly hills and like erica girardi like goes home and we see like where she grew up and grandpappy's house don't care, don't want to see it, give me flash, give me cash. You know what I'm saying? I mean that lovingly, just degaff hard. Um, I remember even in Broad City, which is the best show, I love that fucking show, when they go home to see Abby's family, I just, I want to live in the now, you know? I feel like the rearview mirror is smaller than the windshield for a reason, and I just don't like those plot lines. I think it takes us out of the drama and the chaos, and it's distracting and deeply unnecessary. So that's something that's been keeping me up at night. Also, oh my God. I mean this so wholeheartedly. I, when I was in Boston, I was looking for the best martini in the city, okay? This is true. 
strike me dead if I'm lying. I called a restaurant that I was going to and asked them because all the light at the end of my tunnel, especially like during a day where I'm just, you know, nose on that grindstone is a perfectly frothy blue hand stuffed blue cheese olive martini, as we all know. Nothing will fuck up my day more. And I mean, nothing will fuck up my day more than a martini that is served in a coupe, coupe, coupa, Cooper Nielsen in a coupe glass. I I don't mind one of the Nick and Nora glasses. This is how you know I'm a little bit of a crazy person and I don't really affiliate as crazy, but I affiliate as deeply, deeply specific in particular. And if one detail is off, my whole evening will be ruined and I'll just get on that fucking hamster wheel, that half speed hamster wheel, like no coupe glasses, no coupe glasses, no coupe glasses, no coupe glasses, olive stuffed with oil, olive not hand stuffed. Like I just ring around the rosy. <sighs> exhausting being me um I did call the restaurant that I was going to and I was like hey weird question um do you guys serve your martinis in coupe glasses because I went on Yelp and I saw all of their martinis were served in a very thick thick stemmed coupe glass and it's just I want a frail stem okay thin as a needle and I want a sharp sharp classic martini glass no rounded edges no rounded edges do I I don't mind the Nick and Nora shape google it the more you know this is an informational podcast if it comes with a sidecar which I find to be just the the elevated martini experience which is what I did all weekend with my son schlepping him to antique marts this is what I need in my life for mental stability I need a individual mini sized vintage crystal ice bucket with a coordinating carafe insert, okay, for my sidecar martini. And I need a perfect Waterford. I've broken 18 of them. I need a perfect crystal, thin, thin, thin. I'm literally foaming out the mouth. Excuse me. It just sounds so good martini glass and I need to have my reserve martini in my individual ice bucket with crushed ice surrounding it and I need to just tipple little sips at a time okay that's what I need with my bell for a refill my refill bell that's that's what is bringing me joy that is the light at my end of of the item la la papa can you hear me Rebecca can you hear me it's been a week. It's been a week. It's been a week. <clears throat> Throat's closing up. <coughs> okay, more fun stuff. Britney Spears has announced on her Instagram whilst clad in some form of a silky nightgown and a veil that um, she is married again to herself. Uh, Her caption read, the day I married myself, bringing it back because it might seem embarrassing or stupid, but I think it's the most brilliant thing I've ever done. Um, Remember, remember a little while ago when us as social media consumers felt entitled and informed enough to embolden Britney um, to... I mean, really, we kickstarted the Free Britney movement. And while her conservatorship was corrupt, no doubt, and disgusting, I will stand by forever and always that a little bit of supervision isn't the worst thing in the world. And I mean that with love because I care about Britney. I'm not an enabler. I am a true fan and supporter. And I would say mild to moderate supervision feels like a good idea for me. Um, I don't know. I That's just me. And love you, Brittany. I'm I'm proud of you. By the way, there are so many days where I, I would love to marry myself. So maybe I'm just jealous of her freedom because I've got a old ball and chain shafe, shafe, shafe and all over this house. <laughs> sharing, marriage and sharing. It is so difficult. I, ca- I screamed for Andrew earlier. I was like, Andrew, he come, comes running and he's like, babe, is everything OK? What's going on? I'm like, everything is not OK. I am hovering at a 2% battery life and I have terrible news. He's like, more terrible news. What is it? I was like, Clyde cannot start his Montessori program. 
in 24 hours because he's not independently walking unassisted. Therefore, okay, I am the primary caretaker for the foreseeable future with no light, no light at the end of thy tunnel. And he's like, oh, that's no big deal. I'm like, that is so easy for you to say, okay? I am white knuckling it after this past week. White fucking knuckling it. You know, last week it was cute. I was like, oh my God, we're bonding. We're doing the thing. We're bathing together. We're snuggling. We're kissing. We're loving. We're romanticizing our time together. But that's because there was... (laughs) There was some support on the other side. Now we're fucking freeballing. Okay, I can't deal with a potential stalker and lack of child care. We're going to get through this. Everything is temporary. What do I always tell people? Everything is temporary. And even when things aren't okay, they're still okay. The only way out is through. A smooth sea never made for a skillful sailor. Okay, that's a Jackie Schimmel original, I think. Actually, I probably um, plagiarized it, but it sounds so good coming out of my mouth. Okay, more Diddy updates. I mean, (laughs) the sunshine is here on this beautiful Tuesday. I'm sorry. This is such a downer of an episode. It's so dark. It's such a fucking downer. I'm like, more good news. Diddy accused of drugging and assaulting 13-year-old alongside anonymous male and female celebrity. Ooh, I am so nervous about this. To quote the great Sutton Strack, name them, name them, name them. Give us the names and lock them the fuck up. I hate P. Diddy. I hate him. I want him to be made an example. I want his asshole to be stretched like the crevasses of the Grand Canyon, but not in a way that satisfies him, in a way that deeply punishes him. As I'm saying this, if you're watching the video, I have a <laughs> I have a fist, okay? Every time I talk about P. Diddy, I clench my fists, okay? Because I just can't stand the injustice. I cannot stand I cannot stand that there were people that knew what was going on and just placated him when he's doing disgusting things because of his fucking celebrity. You should all be ashamed of yourself. I need that motherfucking list. And people are speculating. This is all alleged. I, I, people are alleging that it's Beyonce and Jay-Z. That would break my fucking heart. I think everyone is innocent until proven guilty. I need to know who these celebrities are. A 13 year old, you have got, you are disgusting. You are disgusting. I hate you, P. Diddy. You're disgusting. And this trial is going to be, I mean, exposing in ways that we are not ready for, but are so ready for. I need justice. Justice now. Leo slash Richard is such a diva when it comes to food, and I obviously am only going to feed him the very best food I can find him. I recently just switched over to Sunday's dog food, and he loves it so much. This is the truest thing I will ever say. Okay. We used to free feed Leo and just like leave a bowl of food, and he would just pick at it all day. Since we've been giving him the Sunday's food, he devours it all in one helping because he loves it so much, and it's been so much better for us to like give him breakfast, lunch, and dinner because it kind of just like times up with his digestive system. He's never loved food as much as he's loved this Sunday's dog food. It is fresh dog food made from a short list of human grade ingredients. Sunday's contains 90% meat, 10% superfoods, and 0% synthetic nutrients or artificial ingredients. Dog parents report noticeable health improvements in their pups, including softer fur. I can speak to this myself. Clyde's fur, his coat, It's like completely changed. The fresher breath, better poops, and more energy after switching to Sundays. My favorite thing about Sundays is how convenient it is because unlike other fresh dog food, it does not require refrigeration or preparation because of their air drying process. So all you have to do is pour and serve. Every order ships right to your door. You're never going to have to worry about running out of dog food ever again. They also have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Get 40% off your first order of Sundays. Go to Sundays for dogs.com forward slash Bible or use the code Bible at checkout for 40% off your first order of Sundays. 
Imagine that I get like abducted or fucking murdered in the midnight hour by a woman in a pale blue robe. And this is my last episode. And like the fucking pull quote is get cable, bitch. I mean, it just it doesn't get better. And I just got my black toilet in with the brass little lever. So it's not my time to go. I just got my black Toto toilet. I Black Toto toilets are sexy. A black toilet, I mean, I like the mystery. I like the cavernous abyss of the toilet bowl. I think that it's just, it's what I needed this week to complete me, you know? And I'm looking forward to that. It's important to have gratitude. Gratitude is the fucking attitude over here. What else is going on? Okay, I'm up to speed on um, Salt Lake City. I'm up to speed on Orange County. Jen Padrante, I cannot help it, but I... I love Jen Padrante. I didn't even remember her last season. Do I have a problem with her fiance Ryan's choice of denim jackets and clothes in general? He looks like an affliction girly. If you don't know what affliction is, it's kind of like, um, I would say like an Ed Hardy 2.0. It's disgusting. It is a vagina dehydrator. It is about as uncool as it possibly could get. Speaking of uncool, we have some backup costumes um, for Aunt, for Clyde if the Troy Savon of it all like doesn't work and he doesn't feel like wearing a mesh tank top on his first time trick-or-treating. So I got him a lion costume. I got him the Chippendale costume. And I also got him, get this, an avocado costume because we thought that maybe we could embroider it Haas, like a Haas avocado. I mean, it's just so cute. So I thought maybe like what could Andrew and I be that would accompany his avocado essence. So I found two adult onesie avocado costumes. Andrew looked at me. He's like, listen, I'll do a lot. Like I'm not, I don't have an ego. I'm not a weirdo, but I don't really want to dress up as three fucking avocados in public. And I thought, you know what? I like that you have boundaries and I like that you say no. So respected, metabolized, and I'll go back to the drawing board. Now, where does Andrew fit in in the Troy Sivan Charlie XCXCX of it all. I was thinking he could be our sound engineer and just like hold our microphones and wear in ears, or he could be, I don't know, he could be our security guard. There's a lot of options, but that is what I'm leading with. I don't know that I'm going to be able to pull off like a black curly wig, but maybe I am. I mean, I'm one step there with the bronze root of it all. The girlies got the memo. An email went out about a week and a half ago. And all of these blonde bitches that I know and love, okay, both personally and publicly, we all got the email that we're not doing the ultra blonde hair anymore. It's had its day. It's, you know what? That blonde hair that we all fucking had. I was talking to Morgan Stewart about this, okay? We were having a very deep, deep connected conversation. You would have thought that we were talking about just like the afterlife and politics, et cetera, et cetera. The way that we were dissecting our own hair color, which cut to a couple weeks ago, was exactly the same. We all had the same fucking hair color, okay? It happened around, I would say, 2018. We all wanted to be that buttery, golden blonde, not icy blonde. That's a different category of girl. I was never the icy blonde girl. Ashkenazi, you know, the the Brillo pad could not take that level of bleach. But we all wanted to be a buttery, creamy blonde, okay? A bright and light, classic blonde. In the past six months, it's gotten severely uncool, Okay, it's not elegant, it's not tasteful, it's not chic, it's not of the moment. So we all internally had to reassess our decision-making process and decide, make the conscious effort and bold decision to kind of work a bit of a route, okay? And it goes against the grain of who we are as human beings, okay? As performers in society, if you will, to really commit 
to the Bronze Root. Now, I am committing, this is not great because we are we don't have a fresh blow dry. It's also, there's something that happens when you have a darker root where I, I believe it's health that I'm not used to. I My roots feel healthy. They feel shiny. They feel rejuvenated. And therefore, they're less dehydrated from because they're used to just being so brittle from the bleach that they look, I wouldn't say oily because I could stick my head in a vat of extra virgin and olive oil and it would just suck it right up and still be a bit of a fire hazard. You want to talk about a fucking fire hazard? These bright lights in this studio mixed with this brittle, the brittle ends of my hair. We're talking Woolsey fires up in here. It's me. Hi, I'm the problem. It's me. If this house goes ablaze, it's because of these bright lights and this fucking Brillo pad. You know, I, I got to worry about turning my head too much on a pillow because we could get a fucking brush fire. We could have a brush fire. If I start tweaking out, brush fire. <sighs> How did we get here? Where are we going? So yeah, the girlies are going brawned. And if you haven't gotten the email, the Google alert, you heard it here first. It's just what we're doing. It's fall, y'all. I'm going to sit in front of my pumpkin motif. Have I gone back to Trader Joe's 700 times to restock on pumpkins? Yes, I have. I'm like, Andrew, we only need 10 more. So we go, we we fill up the car, we get the pumpkins. I get home, I'm like, we really only need like, I would say like moderately like 36 more pumpkins. We go back, we fill up the car, we load them out. I'm like, it's either we do less, like we scale all the way back or we times it by 100. Like, do we need 500 pumpkins? I'm not sure. Do I do a one side cascading pumpkin motif? Maybe I don't need it on both sides. Maybe I need one real statement cascading pumpkin agenda. What the fuck is going on? What the fuck is going on? Okay, we're going to end with some more toxic negativity and then you know what I'm going to do to reset this is what I need to recalibrate today let's workshop this okay I am going to get in my car I am going to the Calabasas health nut I'm going to get the deluxe salad with shredded chicken and a large mango green teeny okay I'm going to park behind the Bristol Farms facing a suburban brick wall okay I am going to eat said salad in the car hot boxing it with all the dressing I want all the dressing in all of the crevices of my seat then I'm going to go to the Fallbrook Home Goods and buy some sensible coffee table books because I am waiting on a walnut gallery kind of bench console hybrid for my bedroom that's going to sit very very low very sexy very low with like fluted wood and I need to stack coffee table books on top of the low console okay just stacks of books so it looks like I'm reading okay with like a weird tchotchke I need like a weird rogue antique tchotchke also we'll hit up the antique mart this is how we recalibrate this is how we recalibrate and then I'm going to pick up a rotisserie chicken from my favorite place this place called Moody Market They have a gorgeous rotisserie chicken with a salsa verde. I'm going to put it in the oven with some roasted potatoes. I'm going to have a gorgeous martini tonight while I watch the Real Housewives of Orange County season 17 part three reunion. Okay. And that's how I'm going to reset. Another thing that is really pissing me off this week. I'm, I'm a little on the fritz. How many times am I going to say that this episode? You know, they can't all be hits. They just, they just can't, they kind of are low key, but they can't all be hits. So, you know, whatever. Um, Ladies with children, there is something so deeply annoying and unsettling. You know, when you're like out and about with your kid, okay, and maybe they're having a rough day, maybe they're being a little whiny, maybe they're being a little bit of an asshole, okay, and then rogue strangers will come up to you and say something like, oh, he's hungry, or oh, he needs a nap, not asking you, telling you what your child, who they have no fucking intel on needs like you're not doing your fucking job I swear to god I almost lost my mind on a bitch named Marissa 
last week who came up to me. Clyde has his molars coming in, as previously stated, and he's just been a little bit fussy, a little bit needy. All he wants is me to hold him and like shove him back inside of my vagina. He wants to be one flesh, which I low key do as well. So it's toxic. It's my first toxic relationship. We are really obsessed with each other right now. We've bonded and we've got this like, I mean, it's like a love thing, but also like dying to drop him off into any type of Montessori program in Southern California that will take, you know, a really cute obese baby with a bum leg. He's fucking available. Okay, I've got a bento box ready to rumble and an uh, engraved, not an engraved, a monogrammed backpack. Okay, a unisex fashion forward backpack with his fucking name on it. Clyde Lion ready to rumble. Somebody pick him up. Where's that bitch in the blue robe? If I, if I leave him outside of the pumpkin motif, maybe she'll come and collect him. I don't know. Just saying. This bitch, Marissa, comes up to me. Oh, he he's hungry. I'm like, no, he's not. He just ate. Does he look fucking hungry? He's bursting at the seams. I can barely finagle him in this Air One cart, okay? The, the, the seat, the handle is pressing into his midsection. He's Hardly starving, Marissa. Oh, he must be tired. Or no, not he must be. Oh, he's tired then. He just woke up from a two-hour nap, Marissa. Why don't you stay in your fucking lane and go pay for your $318 pre-cut watermelon, Marissa? I don't have time for your feedback, Marissa. I'm going to key your Kia Sorento. Marissa with the bumper stickers. Marissa. Hey, Marissa, your kid has an overbite, okay, and an unsunny disposition. So why don't you tend to your child, Marissa? Stop commentating on my current situation, Marissa with one S. Anyways, thank you so much for listening to this episode. I'm going to go splash some cold water on my face and uh, get it together next week oh, to flush out. <laughs> flush down my black toto toilet to flush out off-brand October. Have we filmed a home tour? Yeah, we did. Okay. And it was rough. It's not great. It is. I'm fighting for my life. Did we do a home tour? Yeah. Did we do a skincare tutorial both daytime and nighttime? Yeah, we did. And is next week's episode going to be the most, the the humdinger, the grand finale fireworks of off-brand October? You bet your sweet ass, Marissa. I will talk to you next week. I'm going to be bright-eyed and bushy-tailed next week. So just look forward to that. If I make it, if I make it, if I'm not stabbed in the midnight hour by Marissa in her blue robe. Thank you all for listening. Five stars on iTunes. Grammar. I'm so sorry about this. Ble let's bleep out the name. I don't want to give her free press. Let's bleep her out. Okay. Love you so much. Have a great week. Goodbye. <laughs>